Hey, Ginger. Come here. Check this out. We're making custom cables. You're not going to want to miss it. Ginger doesn't want to miss it. Let's do it. So we need to make a custom cable for the Suzuki, for the compression release. Little lever right here comes up to right here and it is completely rusted away. And from what I see, they don't sell it. They don't sell it or I can't find it or if I do find it, it's probably going to be on eBay used and probably just as in bad as condition as this one. So let's make one. So making new cables is pretty dang easy. There's really not much to it. You got your sheath, you got your inner cable, um, and then you have, you know, sometimes they have custom ferrules, custom ends on them. And then you have just your little retaining nub. This one has the little cylinders. Um, easy enough. You can make balls. I can show you how to make balls. You can make the little S-curve. I can do all that. Um, but let's make an entire cable from scratch, essentially. So you can buy bulk cable sheath for bicycles and I'm sure motorcycles, everything else. Um, this is just spiral round steel. Um, you can see this one's like flat instead of this is kind of rounded. No big deal. This one is, um, this cable short, short enough that I can just use a scrap cable here that has a good, that's not rusted or anything inside. So that's that. And then you can buy brand new, um, actual cable for the inside. And this stuff is dirt cheap. A couple bucks. I'll put a link below. Or you, you know, if you pulled this out, if this is a good cable, you can just reuse the cable in there, put new ends on it, everything else. I have new cable here, so I'm just going to use new cable. Either way. So, um, all we need to do, first of all, is get the right length, which is easy enough, and transfer the ferrules from the old cable to the new cable. One end already kind of pulled off. Um, not a big deal. See if we see how far we can set this in there. Might have to run a drill bit in there, and then we can get our correct length and stuff like that. So, you just clamp it down to the uh, sheath without clamping too hard that it um, smashes the cable on the inside. So we'll just, I'll put it in the vise and just pull. Generally speaking, the length of the uh, sheath is not as crucial as the length of the actual cable because the, dis the distance at the end that the cable sticks out is more important than the extra length of the sheath because you can just bend it where you don't need it. But we'll get it close. We'll actually maybe even just give it just a little bit more. It's not that crucial. Yeah, right about there. Use a zip wheel. And if you try to use pliers or something, you're just going to crimp it and smash it. Okay. One end for this cable is already on there. I already have the barrel that I need. And it looks like exactly the same size. Has a little bit of flashing on there. I could sand it up just a little bit. But we'll put one ferrule on. These are kind of loose. I could probably, um, I could smash it to it a little bit. I could also put some epoxy in there, just epoxy it on. But for the most part, it's going to hold itself on. Um, let's see if we can get it out. There's a little plastic liner in this one. So I melted it just a little bit. So let me run a uh, pick in there real fast. I couldn't get the cable to go through this way, so we're going to make it go through this way. Okay, I got it to go through. Just didn't want to go through that way, went through that way. Not a big deal. Doesn't really matter which way you make the cable go. I can make ends on both ends, but I don't need to because I have one of the ends already done. So pull all the way through. And of course, if you're making a cable and, and your sheath is still good, just put a new cable in there. But there we go. Now I just need to measure this to what I think is appropriate, to what distances I have, and then add a ferrule, solder a ferrule onto the end right there. So I'm going to measure it, get it where I want, cut that, and then I'll show you how to make a, a custom ferrule um, or end knob, pull knob whatever it's called, on the end of it. So I just have it mocked up in there and mocked up right to this little lever right here. So I will just 
draw a sharp, sharpie mark exactly where I want that that ferrule, the little retaining nub to be. Okay, we need a drill bit the same size as the um, little barrel nub we need on there. And then I'm gonna mark how deep the length of it. I'm just gonna mark it with a piece of tape, roughly. And it's not that crucial. You can fix it if it's too long. Can't really fix it if it's too short, though. That'll work. Okay, then we got a block of wood. Nothing special. Good drill bit, or drill for our drill bit. And we're just gonna come towards the edge. And that's the same size as the ferrule that I need. Or a little, I don't know what it's called. A little barrel thing. Yep. So it's correct size, correct depth. Now we need a drill bit about the same size as the cable. And we're just going to go into the side, into the middle of that hole. Okay, that was the center of my, this little mark is the center of where I want the little nub so i'm gonna cut this at the end of that okay and now i'm going to clean this up with some sandpaper or uh, something else just rough it up um, so that the solder will actually stick to it now if you're using an old cable like this or something and you're just splicing it and putting a new end on it it's been lubricated before, and so you need to clean it before you actually plan on soldering it. Carburetor cleaner slash parts cleaner is fantastic. Acetone, brake cleaner. Um, you could probably even use alcohol, but I think that these products are way stronger and clean off, you know, silicone and stuff way better than alcohol does. <clears throat> We need an acid paste flux because to bond to steel, and that's just plumbing paste flux. So stuff just for plumbing pipes in your house is an acid flux. Anything generally like this for non-electrical work is going to be an acid flux. Anyway, I'm gonna dip this down in here a little bit, and I'm actually going to try to also pack my little hole with some flux. Okay, end of this is coated. I'm gonna insert this through the hole and so it's inside there. And then when it's inside there, I'm gonna take a pick or something and I'm gonna try to unwind it just a little bit. The solder that I'm using, I am using electrical solder because um, it has lead in it. I think the lead is stronger than plumbing solder that is lead free. So I just cut up a couple little chunks real fast. I'm just going to jam that down in there. It's just gonna, it doesn't really matter. I've done it without jamming it down in there. This just makes it a little bit easier. You know, maybe I'll even put some paste flux on it. It's just kind of holding my wire and stuff in there, too. You can't use too much flux, almost. Well, you can, I guess. Someone's going to just drown it in it. But that's the only thing that causes the solder to flow out and bond to stuff, essentially. Now, we have the torch, just a propane torch. Um, you might be able to do it with a soldering iron. I've... Never really attempted, just because, nah, you, maybe. I don't know, just do it with a torch. Um, and now all I'm gonna do is heat it up with the wood. The wood's gonna burn, but as soon as it starts to liquefy, it's actually going to, I essentially created a mold. You'll see.
I don't know if you saw that, but all of a sudden it just fell in there. So the bottom had liquefied and everything had went around it. That's it. Give it two minutes to cool down and we'll break it out of there. Super easy. If you want to know how to make S-bands and stuff like that, about the same, but I have a whole video just on that. I'll put a link at the end of this video where you can go watch that. Let's get this out of here. I'm just going to, I mean, we only have to chew down to the end of the cable and we already softened up the wood by burning it. So, that's about it. Boom. What do you think of dem apples? Check that out. And I have put this nub in the vise and put my entire body weight on it and yanked and yanked and yanked. That's me. That's on there. Probably when, I don't know if I would do this, if this is your first attempt, to, like something like a brake cable on a motorcycle you're going to ride on the highway, but that's it. I might clean it up just a little bit, just flatten out that end just to make sure it buries itself all the way in there, but that's a ferrule. I guess I don't have a pretty H on it like they put on theirs, but same difference. I'm going to tuck that in. It works. Get on. What am I going to say? Should I sit in front? No? Okay, hop up. Come on. There we go. Ready? See if I can start it. If you need to make something like a ball, just do a little barrel and then just take a little file and this stuff like sands, files away effortlessly. Maybe something funky like this, just make this impression in the top of the wood, fill it in and then drill the hole out afterwards. You know, same with that. Just drill it out, file out this little slot afterwards. Anything can be made. This stuff files effortlessly, the solder.